This, uh, now we're going to look at some old maps. These are old maps that have depictions of the Garden of Eden in Armenia. So this is an 8th century map found in Turin, Italy. And you can have the, look at the very top. It's got Adam and Eve um, naked there. And it's got Adam looking very angry at uh, Eve for, <laughs> um, for her part in uh, the fall. And then you see the snake. And what's very interesting at, at Eve's left hand foot, left side, you can see that rectangular box there. And that's very interesting. What does that mean? Um, it, see at the bottom, right where, where Eve's foot is? Do you see that, that lake? That, well, I'm going to call it a lake, but it probably is a lake because it feeds the, the river. And that's literally what you see in, um, with the Tigris River. Because the Tigris River, um, st the highest point of the Tigris River is in Lake Hazar. And I wonder if that is Lake Hazar. It's, it's certainly possible that that is Lake Hazar. Okay, let's go to the next map. This is the Manchester map uh, of 1175. It looks like it was based on this, the Turin map. When I mean, you look carefully, again, it's got Adam and Eve. Adam doesn't look so angry at Eve at this point. By the way, this one. must be after... They partook of the tree. Yes. Of the because now they realize they're naked. Yeah. They're the, covering their private parts. Yes. <laughs> yes. After, yeah, exactly. Because before that, probably they didn't care. They didn't even know if it's bad. Yes. What's interesting, you kind of see a little, almost like a little gate at the bottom, like a portal going into the Garden of Eden. So I wonder, um, even though this map is very similar to the first one, uh, it has uh, this other idea of a gate, it seems. Okay, then this is a 1601 map. We're getting more to the modern times. And you can see the Euphrates River uh, and going up. And what's really interesting is, is in the Hebrew, uh, when it mentions Genesis in Genesis 2, it says, and it, uh, the rivers parted and become four heads. And the word head in Hebrew is rosh. And rosh is the word for head. And really, literally it means where... It's where the source of the river is. So we're, look, we're talking about high ground. We're not talking about the mouth. So for rivers, they have a mouth and they have a head. So we're talking the head of the river. So we're talking about in a mountainous area. So here you can see Eden. Um, and this shows it kind of intersecting uh, the Euphrates River there. This is another map in 1666. Um, now this map was made by an, a man named Marmaduke Carver. And he wanted to find the, the location of the Garden of Eden. He was a clergyman living in uh, London. And he went there to see if he could find the Garden of Eden. And he's, he found a place near the Euphrates River. So the upper part of the Euphrates River. Um, and I believe the Tigris. So when the Tigris and Euphrates come together, uh, this is what he believed uh, was Eden. This is the next map, a 1762 map. Uh, you can see a little bit better um, cartography. Uh, uh, Ms. Flores and I are, were working on uh, teaching that geography, and like we can see the latitude lines and longitude lines. And uh, you can see it depicted. Now it's interesting, you see Lake Van there is depicted um, as being like a circular lake. And then this other part, um, it, it's, probably, it's probably another lake. It's probably uh, Lake Urmia in Iran, uh, which is a dry lake now. It's no longer, it doesn't have any water anymore. Uh, it's dried up. This is a 1724 map. Again, you see, uh, when you look very closely at it, the Cat du Peri Terrestre, you can see uh, probably Lake Van is the lake there to the left. And to the right of it, east of Lake Van, you see um, Adam and Eve in the garden. And then to the right of Adam and Eve, you can see Mount Ararat. Uh, Mount Ararat depicted with the, uh, where the uh, Noah's Ark came to land. Okay. So it's pretty interesting. And now we're looking more at a more detailed map. This is the 1725 map. Uh, this is a uh, Dutch map. And in this map, we can also see a lot of geographical features. You have Lake Van on the side. To the left, that's definitely Lake Van. 
Um, and then you've got at the bottom, this is the Longacine uh, lakes. Um, so it was believed to the south of Lake Van, there was, uh, there is a portion of the Tigris goes to the south of uh, Lake Van as well. And uh, they believe that those were in uh, Eden. But then you see the, the Murat River or the Euphrates, it's coming in over Lake Van. Uh, you can see all, all kinds of geographical detail in this one and it actually makes it very clear that Eden is in that area and it's quite easily recognizable. This is another uh, 1780 map, very similar to the one that we saw before. Uh, again, you have um, the same geographical features that are there in Eden. But it, what's interesting, it's, it only shows, I guess it would show all of Lake Van belonging to Eden, but it kind of almost like bisecting it on the top and the bottom of the lake. So it's kind of interesting how they show that. Um, this map shows two possibilities for Eden. Uh, one being up in the area of Armenia, and the other one being to uh, near the Persian Gulf, uh, near what's now Kuwait. That's where it must have been. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, the Persian Gulf. Um, and so, so there was basically competing uh, theories at that time. One was saying it was in Armenia. There was uh, some theories that saying it was in um, further down uh, in the area of like Babylon all the way to the Persian Gulf. Um, so, yeah, there was different ideas for sure. And this is the, this is the top part of that, showing the Tigris and the Euphrates. And th this kind of reminds me of the Utasar petroglyph. It's got the two rivers on both sides, right? On um, one side and two rivers on both sides. Can I ask a question? Yep. yep. So this pretty much, it seems like it matches those rivers that was mentioned earlier. I can't remember the name in the Bible. Yeah, yes. It seems like it, it, exactly. This could be a good candidate. Not yeah. Sure, for sure, but yes. It seems like... Very, very good. So you see the Paishan on the top. You see the Gaihan on the yeah. right. You see the Tigris to the bottom and the Euphrates. So... Okay, so the Gaihan River to the right would be... Probably, it's, it is the same as the Arax River. The, the Arax River it would be the Gaihan. The Paishan um, is a river that comes uh, from the north, or sorry, empties out in the north, and uh, there is, um, it's the, called the Koruch River. The Koruch River would be the Paishan in this map. So which is on the top. Yes, the Koruch River. So those maps do show all the four uh, rivers there. Um, this is a 1782 map. And here you've got the land of Eden now to the west of Lake Van um, and not to the, to the east of it. So interesting how different maps have a little bit different depictions of Eden. This is a 1783 map, which very clearly shows um, Eden, Le Paradis Terrestre. But the only thing is the rivers Honestly, this confuses the heck out of me. I've tried to find this, how to correlate a modern map to this, and good luck, because it's so hard. Like, I can't, I mean, it, it does identify the Araxes River there. Um, you know the Tigris to the left, and you've got the Euphrates, but, man, it's very, uh, like, literally impossible to find what's depicted in this map. Um, I think I can still try, but it breaks my brain. And I don't know if I want to try anymore. <laughs> you mean you can't find I can't, I can't that? find the exact, the, yeah, the things that are depicted in that, oh, I do not I know if that. they exist today. Um, we do know with climate change that the, the size of lakes do change over time. They get bigger uh, when there's higher water levels, and they shrink up. You when there's more over one of them. It seems like it's all part of Armenia. There it is, like yes. Yes. Um, yeah, it's all part of Armenia, exactly. That's kind of like the, I think the takeaway point of all these different maps is it is in this highlands of Armenia. Um, this is another 1789 map by Augustin Calme, French Benedictine monk. And he shows um, the Garden of Eden to be 
again to the east of Lake Van um, in that area near Ararat too. So we see there um, this idea that it's east of the Lake Van. Now this is a, maybe more the most detailed map I've seen of 1859. This is a map by um, Adam Jose, Carte de Perdi Terrestre. And it shows Eden as being around Lake Van and to the north of Lake Van. So I think at the very least we can say that the it was accepted among people that that the area of Eden was most probably in the, the area of Armenia. Uh, today, this is a kind of a modern map of that. You can see um, Lake Van, where it says ferry. You can see Lake Van. It almost looks like a bird. To me, it looks like a bird or a phoenix. Um, it looks like a phoenix with the, you know, the body, the wing, the neck, and the head there um, right next to, Lake, uh, to the city of Van. And then to the left, you have almost like an eye, where you have El Asig, and you see the Euphrates going all the way around, wrapping its arm around El Asig there, and that's quite interesting. So this whole area, I would argue, is the area of Eden. This would be Eden um, as it was uh, known by ancient people, uh, the area of Eden. This is a map um, made in 1896 by um, some French, uh, sorry, German cartographers, and again, it's showing the percentage of population that were Christian in in this area. So those red letters you see are the percentage of Christian population, and you can kind of see around this uh, Van area um, a high percentage of Christians. So um, to the right of Lake Van, you can see 33 percent in the ancient city of Van. Um, and in the middle of the screen, you see uh, 48, 44% Christian. So the, we see a real um, high percentage of Christians living in this area of Armenia before the genocide. Unfortunately, the genocide changed all these numbers. Um, sadly, the, the Christian population was almost completely eradicated. There are almost... Uh, uh, just a very few percentage now um, after the genocide. So now we're going to look at some of the historical sources. This is Lord Byron. Lord Byron said, if the scriptures are rightly understood, it was in Armenia that paradise was placed. So he was a romantic poet um, that lived in the 1800s. Um, Fausto, who lived in the 1500s, he proposed Armenia as the uh, proper place for the Garden of Eden. He's actually the man, one of the men that uh, invented the parachute, was Fausto. Uh, interesting. And he believed that the Araxes and the Cyrus River uh, also were the rivers of the Garden of Eden. Joseph E. Duncan, author of Milton's Earthly Paradise, a historical study of Eden, he says, both Peririus and Lapide have suggested Armenia as a logical location for Eden and Paradise. Johann Vorstius, maintaining that scripture clearly stated that great rivers arose in Eden itself, also contended that Eden and paradise must be in Armenia. Okay, and then as well, um, Carver had wrote a book about it being in Armenia as well. Joseph Piton de Tournefort, he wrote um, that the most likely spot for, for uh, the terrestrial paradise would be the country of the three churches, which is in Armenia. McClintock and Strong, they were very uh, famous um, people who put together an encyclopedia of the Bible and uh, a very famous uh, work that was respected by very, very highly by Christian sources. They say the opinion which fixes Eden in Armenia would have place first because it is that which has obtained most general support and seems nearest the truth. Um, they again go on to say Eden was a tract of country, the finest imaginable, laying probably between the 35th and 40th degree of north latitude, of such moderate elevation and so adjusted with respect to mountain ranges and watersheds and forests as to preserve the most agreeable and salubrious conditions of temperature and all atmospheric changes. Okay, H.F.B. Lynch, he also said in uh, 1901 that um, 
Armenia. So what attracted me to Armenia? He said the fabled seat of paradise. Now this is a really interesting uh, perspective. This was a missionary in Armenia in 1875, and she went with a, uh, a group of American missionaries and spent a lot of time there in Armenia working with the people of Armenia. And what's really neat is that she gives a very detailed account of where the actual garden is. So if you think of where Eden is, a lot of these maps show Eden. She actually gives a very detailed uh, account of where they believed the Garden of Eden was. So um, this is what she says. A lovely lake like that of Galilee sleeps within their embrace. A branch of the Euphrates curves its gleaming arm around this wondrous mosaic of emerald and agate carnelian and onyx, with the golden sunlight resting upon embowered villages, of which we could count 25 without and 50 with the aid of a glass, which is a um, binoculars. Their beaten paths crossing and recrossing the plain in every direction, it may indeed have been, as the people say, the very Garden of Eden. So in her day, uh, the people that she worked with and lived, uh, worked among believed that their area was the actual Garden of Eden. And this is where, when I take her statement, I actually did the math and looked at, uh, this is a topographic map, and you can actually see, uh, she was in the uh, city of Harput. Harput um, is there to the left. I'm showing you the elevation, 4,632 feet. And Ella Sig, which was below her, was 1,000 feet below, just as she said. So 1,000 feet below. She said it's a smiling plain, so it's kind of a curved plain there. And it's 60 miles from the mountain peak. And literally, when you see the, the white mountain peak, the snow tap uh, cap mountain peak, it is 60 miles from there. Um, and looking at all the details, um, and of course, that lake that's like the size of uh, the Sea of Galilee is at the bottom, Lake Hazar, which we saw in that earliest map. Lake Hazar is approximately the size of the Sea of Galilee. So using her description, um, of where the Garden of Eden was. This is where it was. It's, it used to be called Mezri. If you can look in the middle there, you see the M-E-Z-R-E. -E. And above Mezri was the city of Harput. So it's C-H-R-A-R-P-U-T. So Harput was uh, an ancient Armenian fortress, which was there, to guard the place on the, of the plain. So Harput was made as a a military fortress to keep or preserve that plain um, as, a, um, as a place where people could live. So what's really interesting when you actually look at this, um, that's where I think uh, she considered the Garden of Eden to be, that area in yellow. So very interesting. Um, this is it today. This is that area today. And we can see Hazar Golu, which is the... Is the source of the Tigris, the highest point of the Tigris River. I can't, unfortunately, I can't get any, but you can see the lake at the bottom. That's Lake Hazar. Now, in the Armenian genocide, thousands of Armenians were dumped in that lake. Their bodies were dumped in that lake and they were killed. When did that happen? This happened in the year 1915 to 1922. So seven years of genocide and 1.5 Armenian, million Armenians. World War One, yes. During World War One, 1.5 million Armenians were killed, and all the, genocide. All genocide, and it was carried out by the Kurdish population, but the Kurdish population were given um, ammunition and logistical support by the Germans. So the German gave about 600 um, officers to carry out the genocide. Did Kurds today ever? Acknowledge. Acknowledge. I'm not sure if the Kurds acknowledge what they did to the Armenians, but very sad. And what's interesting as well, you see the, the lake at the top? It's called Keban Bariji. Now, Keban Bariji was not there 100 years ago during the genocide. It was, those were villages. Those were Armenian villages, but now they're covered under hundreds of feet of water because what they did was they dammed up the, the Euphrates River to allow just it to be filled up with water. So in a sense, the, the, not only is the, uh, the Armenian people were killed, but their very homes were flooded with water. So to, to remove 
the villages that used to be there, they're literally underwater mm -hmm. to this day. Um, Keban Bariji did not exist a hundred years ago, but it, it was, uh, the land was reworked to allow the water to go in there. Okay, and you can see El Asig to the top, it's a kind of a, um, the, the middle top to the little bit left. And El Asig, I think, is where um, Mary West discovered, uh, and I mean, she didn't discover it, but she told uh, us where the Garden of Eden was, according to the Armenian people. This is the view from the Harput Castle, so it overlooks the uh, Garden of Eden. Um, and this is what it used to look like. This is a missionary's uh, drawing, a 1917 drawing of Mezira, where, or where the Garden of Eden was according to the people. So they believe that this was the area of Eden. And you can see they had chapels, they had an orphanage there, um, a Danish orphanage, a German orphanage. Uh, they had a minaret there, so there was a Muslim population. Um, and then they had behind is Lake Hazar or Lake Zazovosk and Yegehi village. So you can see here how beautiful it was at one time and just very, very peaceful and, and beautiful before the um, Armenians were uh, destroyed from that area. So this is it today a view from Harput Castle. But you can see how beautiful it is, really. It is very gorgeous uh, country there. If I could, I would love to go there and, and just take a drone drone footage of that area. There's another picture of that from the Harput uh, Castle. This is what it, uh, this is Harput way back then, so the early 1900s. Now what's interesting, just a little bit historical thing, this was called the Euphrates College. And in the Euphrates College, they had the boys uh, part of it and the girls part of it. And it was started by the missionaries, but actually ended up becoming very, very influential among the Armenian people. And a lot of leaders from the Armenian people came from this college. It became very prestigious. Um, and a lot of uh, professors and very educated people came from... Almost every one of them has a mustache. Yes. So was that a requirement? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, everyone's got a mustache. That was the style back then. Um, and sadly, all the men that you see here, yeah. Sadly, all the men you see here were probably uh, murdered in the genocide, almost to a man. Oh, because they were Christian. Because they were Christian, they they were um, they were massacred with the help of the German uh, officials, the German. Uh, at that time, Germany wanted the land. And, uh, of course, they, they failed to win the war, the First World War. But there, I, I'm sure they had ideas of how they could take over the land if Germany had won. This is what it looked like back then in the early 1900s. This is the, the city of, or town of Mesri. You can see the highlands in the background. This is it today, a closer look at that area. And so it's, it's quite beautiful there in that area. And honestly, after seeing this, I have so much respect for the Armenian people who were uh, murdered in that area. These, these Christians whose history was that this is, this is the land of Eden, this is the Garden of Eden, it was there their history, the thing that they, uh, what they were known for. These are the children that were, uh, many of them were murdered. Um, and you can see the, the teachers with the children and just how many there were that were part of these uh, missionary schools. But these missionary schools were not like what we see uh, in the, like say the residential schools of Canada. These kids went on to be leaders in their communities. They, they were, um, highly, very well educated. So I have a lot of respect for, the, uh, for this college. Unfortunately, um, it had a tragic uh... Merhaba değerli izleyenler. Bugün Elazığ ilimizde Harput Mahallesi'ndeyiz. Harput Mahallesi tarihi dokusuyla meşhur bir yer. Burada camiler, kümbetler, kiliseler ve en önemlisi Harput Kalesi var. Gelin burası nasıl bir yermiş hep beraber görelim. Harput'a ulaşım çok basit. 
Elazığ içinde pek çok yerde gördüğünüz Harput tabelalarını takip ederek veya Harput minibüslerine binerek ulaşım sağlayabiliyorsunuz.